Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss about turning moment diagrams. Now we know what is turning moment while doing the engine force analysis. We have discussed that turning moment T is the product of the crank effort which is Ft into the perpendicular distance which is R that is the length of the crank and we also derived the formula for the turning moment and this crank effort is the force or the net effort you can say which is applied at the crank pin perpendicular to crank and this gives the turning moment to the crankshaft so this ft right which is the tangential force at the crank pin it provides the required turning moment to the crankshaft so the graphical representation of this turning moment for the crank rotation that is the angle theta for the rotation of the crank what is the turning moment of the crank at that particular instant that is what we try to plot with the help of the turning moment diagram so in other words we can say the graphical representation of turning moment according to the change in positions of the crank or according to the crank rotation angle which is theta so we'll plot the turning moment diagram for a single cylinder double acting steam engine and you already know the double acting engine is the one in which the working fluid it acts on both sides of the cylinder so while plotting the turning moment we keep turning moment on the y axis and the crank angle or angle theta on the x axis and we'll plot the turning moment for one cycle of the crank shaft rotation or one cycle of the engine that means if it is a four stroke engine we plot the graph for four pi if it is a two stroke engine we plot the graph for the two pi crank rotation angle now if we look at this line you know this this line this is showing the average or the resisting torque and this resisting torque is constant in this system because we are assuming that whatever is the work produced in the system for the same amount of work energy is consumed there is no accumulation of speed and this is a steady state system or the steady state engine we are talking about right so we are saying that there is this this is the average torque line or the average energy line and this is the energy or this is the amount of torque the turning moment which must be provided to the system in order to overcome the resistance or in order to overcome the inertia forces so this is the resistive torque line right now let us look at the graph what exactly is happening from angle 0 to pi by 2 that means when the crank is going from inner dead center to outer dead center you will see that the maximum energy or the maximum turning moment is seen at an angle somewhat near about 90 degree and when the crank is at the positions of 0 degree and 180 degree, we will see that the energy or the turning moment of the crank is 0. So similarly, we will see when the crank is in the in stroke position, again the angle, there is a position at which the energy is maximum and again at these positions, right, these positions, we will see that the energy or the turning moment is 0. And the area under this turning moment diagram is actually showing the work done by the engine so if we see now we see when the engine is going from let's say from a to b so what is happening when the engine or uh, when the system is going when the crank is rotating from this point a to b the work done by the engine is shown by this graph right so this is this is the area this is the area which is showing the work done by the engine while going from point a to b but the amount of work that is required to overcome the resisting torque is only this much. So what is this extra work? This FGH. This FGH is showing the extra work that is being done by the system. So what exactly happens with this extra work? This extra work is being stored in the flywheel in the form of the rotational energy. And this extra work that we are saying FGH, it is stored in the flywheel because it increases the speed of the engine. Now what happens when the engine is going from point B to C, the work produced by the engine is actually HP 
J. But what is the amount of work that is required? It is B H J C because you always need the amount of work which is sub sufficient enough to overcome the resisting torque. So from where are we getting this deficient or the less amount of work? This work is being provided. by the excess work that was stored in the flywheel during first half of the stroke or during first half of the rotation of the crank so this extra work which is being required here is given by the already stored work in flywheel so again in the next slot when the crank is rotating from c to d or you can also say from oc to od the work done by the engine is this much which is c L C J L, uh, this point is I C J I L D. But what is the amount of work that is required by the engine is only this work because this is the amount of work which is to be done to overcome the resisting torque or to get the average value. So this excess work which is being done by the system it actually increases the speed of the engine and it is stored in the flywheel. And again in the next half of the stroke. when the engine produces only this much work right it produces less amount of work but the requirement is of the more so whatever is the requirement that requirement is fulfilled by the flywheel so the function of flywheel is in a particular cycle only in the same cycle it uh, stores the additional energy in the form of rotational energy and it gives it back to the system so it keeps on working continuously and because we are assuming that in this system there is no accumulation of speed therefore the resisting torque is constant and the work that has been produced is equal to the total energy consumed in the system so these graphs are very important as a single graph gives us lot of information about the system like it tells the total work done by the engine in cycle which is equal to the area under this graph which is t into d theta right d theta is the change in the angle of the system you can also find the value of mean torque which is the area under this graph that is the work done upon the crank rotation angle for one cycle so in this case it is 2 pi so we'll use 2 pi if it is for a 4 pi or a four stroke engine so it will be 4 pi so mean torque is work done upon the crank angle now we can also find what is the excess work increases the speed of the engine so what is the amount of energy stored in the flywheel it is this area under the graph which shows the excess energy which is stored by the flywheel and the energy given by the flywheel is this much energy which is given by the flywheel right we may also be asked what is the fluctuation of speed so fluctuation we know is the difference between the maximum and minimum speed now if we look in this one complete cycle of the uh, crank uh, there are two points at which we get the maximum speed and there are two points at which we get the minimum speed so out of these two you know higher side speeds whichever gives the maximum value will become the maximum speed and of the lower sides whichever gives the minimum value becomes the minimum speed and their difference gives the fluctuation of speed to find the power consumed it is what the mean torque into the angular speed of the engine or the crank so now we'll plot the turning moment diagram for the single cylinder four stroke engine four stroke me engine means for the crank for one crank cycle the angle turned by crank is 4 pi so crank angle theta is given on the x axis and the turning moment is shown on the y axis and this is the average or the resisting torque for the system now know the four stroke engine it has got four stroke suction compression expansion and exhaust right we will see all the four strokes individually now in case of the suction stroke the piston is moving from tdc to bdc and crank is rotating from angle 0 to pi so as the piston is moving from tdc to bdc it is creating low pressure in this area of the cylinder and the atmospheric pressure it is it pushes the air fuel mixture inside the cylinder so as this uh, you know freshly charged gases they continue to fill the cylinder near this angle pi or near when they are about to reach this position of bdc 
because of inertia they start moving themselves so initially the work was being done because of the atmospheric pressure but near when they are about to reach this point of bdc they gain momentum and because of the momentum of the fresh charges in the end of the suction stroke we see a small positive loop in the turning moment diagram now in the compression stroke what is happening the work is being done on the gases therefore we get the negative loop and during expansion what is happening the fuel it is burning the gases are expanding and because the work is done by the gases on the system therefore we obtain the positive loop now during the exhaust stroke what is happening this our opposite of suction stroke is happening that the piston it is moving from bdc to tdc right and as the piston is moving from bdc to tdc what is happening the exhaust gases they are getting removed from the cylinder and to do this the work is done by the engine on the gases therefore because the work is done on the gases we are getting the negative loop but once the exhaust gases they start moving out this movement takes place at a very high velocity so at the end of the stroke what exactly happens because of this high velocity these exhaust gases they gain momentum and some of the gases they escape themselves so on certain amount of gases no work has to be done by the system when this uh, piston it is uh, reaching near about this point of tdc so you will see that near this 4 pi position there is a positive loop because of the momentum or you can say because of the high velocity some of the gases they escape themselves so no work has to be done on those gases therefore we get a small positive section in the exhaust stroke now in case of multi cylinder engines that means the engines which have more than one cylinder so the total torque at any instant is actually the sum of the torques which are being developed by all the cylinders at that instant let's assume that if the engine has got two cylinders so the cranks are at 90 degree so what happens the turning moment diagram it has got the less variation in comparison to the single cylinder engines that we saw earlier right both the cases of the uh, this uh, four stroke engine and the double acting steam engine we saw it for single cylinder therefore there were lot of variations but when there are more than one cylinders the variation seen in the turning moment diagram is much lesser in than the other systems or than the systems which have got the one cylinder so in this turning moment diagram we have got the turning moment on y axis and the crank rotation angle on the x axis this line is showing the mean or the average or the resisting torque required by the system so the loops which are above this mean torque is the positive energy or the positive work done and the loops which are below this resisting torque line they are the negative uh, turning moments or the negative work on the system so if we want to find the energies in in the system so if we say that for this mean line mean torque line the energy of, for the system is e because this is the amount of energy which system should always have right to overcome the resistance so in cases when the crank or when the system is doing more work than the required that extra work is being stored in the flywheel and the speed of the engine increases and when the system is producing less work than required that loss or the, or that lack of energy is being fulfilled by the extra energy that is stored in the flywheel so if at any point you want to find the energy so that energy will be the average energy plus or minus the energy at that particular point let's say if i want to find the energy at this point c so this point has got the energy this the average energy which we are denoting by e if i want to find the energy at point d so what exactly has happened in the system e energy was already there or you can say e is the minimum energy that the system should have the average or the resisting energy so at point d the energy stored in the system is e plus a1 the extra work is being done on the system if you want to find the energy at point e so it will be e plus a1 minus a2 because this is the lack of energy in the system at point e which is being fulfilled by the energy stored in the 
flywheel so in this way we can find the total energy of the system or energy at particular points in the system but what is required is the energy with which we are starting the cycle in the end we should be left with the same average energy because we are considering that in this system no energy is being stored and no energy is being lost whatever is the energy given that is, that much amount of work is being done by the system right so in this way we can find out the total energy or the energy at particular points if you want to find the out the maximum or minimum speed from now see maximum can be these three possibilities right these three points can give the maximum energy so out of these three which one has got the highest value that gives us the maximum energy we have got three lower values out of these three the one having the lowest energy will give the minimum energy and the difference between the maximum and minimum gives the fluctuation of energy and in case if we want to find the coefficient of fluctuation of energy that is equal to the mean uh, sorry that is equal to the maximum fluctuation of energy upon the mean energy or the you know mean speed so if you want to find the coefficient of fluctuation that is the maximum minus minimum speed upon the average speed so you can tell it in terms of the speed or you can also tell it in terms of the energy right because the energy is what we are talking about the kinetic energy so the energy is in terms of speed only so you can find the answer in terms of energy or speed it doesn't make any difference